Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we take the mystery out of every node in the Unreal Engine material graph. Today we're going to be looking at sine and cos. Sine and cos. Well, they're not like that, but anyway. An example of what you can achieve with the sine node. You can see this pulsing where my player's feet are on the ground that radiates out. Uh, that's using a sine wave and I'm going to cover sort of how that's achieved in this video. Let us get stuck right into it. Let's take a little look at what sine does first. If we have this gradient here that goes from zero to one and we plug the gradient into a sine wave, you can see that it remaps the values. So zero is still the same, but then 0 0.5 is also zero. And then it dips down into the negative blacks, but we don't actually see that. And then by the time it gets back here, it's zero again. We can visualize this a little bit easier by dividing it by two and then adding 0 0.5. And if you're unsure why I'm doing that, uh, it might be worth checking out my math tutorial right here, uh, if you're interested. And now you can see that it starts at 0 0.5 here, which is gray. And then it makes its way up to fully white right here. Then it dips back down to 0 0.5 in the middle and then it would dip down to zero and then back up to 0 0.5. And if we go into the sign and we halve its period, you'll see that it doubles the effect. So now it does two cycles before it gets to the middle value and then back. And if we went to, you know, 0 0.1, it would be <laughs> very, very stripy. But underneath the sine wave is just this simple gradient. So sine is a really powerful node for making repeating things. So another really useful way to use the sine node is to use time and put time into sine and then put this into, you know, some sort of effect. Maybe it goes into a lerp, um, a three color lerp apparently, cause all my, my shortcuts are bugged. Uh, we'll put that in the alpha, we'll get three colors and we put these into the inputs here, blue into C, red into B, yellow into A, I guess. And we'll pop that out into the base color. And I'll put the sign period back to one. So this will make a full cycle every one second. If you're not sure what time does, I have a video right here uh, that will explain it for you. So we click save on this. You'll see that it's cycling through those three colors because the value of the lerp is fluctuating between zero and one and back down to zero and so on and so on. And you can see it's making a cycle every one second. So sine is really powerful when used in conjunction with time. We could also add a texture to time before the sine wave. So if we go texture and I'll get some clouds and it is party time. You can see it's kind of cycling through the cloud noise, like we saw before with the gradient, how it broke it up into bands and stuff. And if I went into the sign and went 0 0.2 or something, you see there's more bands just like last time. So it's pretty, uh, pretty trippy. If we wanted more bands, but to go slower, we could divide time by a value, which would slow it down. You know, we could slow, we could slow time down to one tenth and still have all these crazy sign bands. Um, we could even go even further. This will get very messy, but I just want to see what happens. That is fucking terrifying. So yeah, uh, very, <laughs> very interesting effects you can achieve with sign. I do a very similar thing in that example that I showed at the start. It's a very similar thing going on here. I have like a, a cloud noise texture, which uses a sine wave to make these kind of pulses around the character's feet. Very cool, very cool. So if we were to take this sine wave and replace it with a cosine wave, you will notice that literally nothing is different. It is the exact same thing as a sine wave, but it's just offset. It starts at a different point which can be useful for some things. So with a sine wave, it starts at zero and it goes up to one, goes back down, and then it ends here where it will repeat and, you know, do it again. If this is one up here, 
and negative one is down here. We find out that negative one is a pretty useless value when we're working with textures and stuff most of the time. So ideally what we do is we divide it by two, which will squish it. It'll bring one down to 0 0.5 and negative one to 0 0.5. And then we add 0 0.5, which brings it so that the negative 0.5s are now zero and the positive 0.5s are now one. And so we've remapped that so it's much more useful where textures are concerned. Now a cosine wave, while it is very similar to a sine wave, starts at one rather than zero, and then it dips down to negative one and then back up and does a repeat, you know? We were to take this cosine wave and flip it vertically like this, um, which would be equivalent to multiplying it by negative one, then we divide it by two, bring the negative one to 0 0.5 and the positive one to 0 0.5, and then offset it by adding 0 0.5. And you can see now we have a wave that starts at zero and goes up to one and back down, which might be much more useful than starting at 0 0.5, like a sine wave does once it's been offset. So cosine is often the better node to use. So just as a really last minute example, um, you can use sine to make something glow back and forth. If we multiply the output by a thousand and plug that into the emissive color, you can see that it's it's glowing back and forth. It's, you know, it's bright and then it, then it goes down a bit and then it glows again. It's sort of pulsating. Could also put a, a color in this by multiplying the output by a three vector. Maybe we want it to glow gold or something. Um, and then we plug that into here. And then this multiply will determine the intensity of the glow. So once that's plugged into the emissive color, you can see it's glowing gold. It's bright and then it dies back down and then it's bright again. And you could use this for like pickups in your game or some sort of magical item or whatever. And it's really powerful because you're not actually using any CPU logic to do this. It's all in the shader. It's very cool. Alternatively, you could use a lerp um, instead of multiplying it by a color. So we could plug that into the lerp, plug the lerp into the emissive color, and then into the inputs of the lerp, we could do some like, you know, red and blue 80. Um, and so that will glow between red and blue back and forth with different luminosity values and you know it looks it looks cool it's very interesting it's party time yeah so i hope that kind of demystified what the sign node can be used for there are probably a million other uses that i haven't covered in this video uh if you have a use that i didn't cover please drop it in the comments below i would love to check it out and i might make a follow-up video if we if we get enough extra things that we can do with the sine wave um but to reiterate what it does is it remaps a range from zero to infinity uh, and it creates a continuous back and forth wave using those values. So if you found this educational and or entertaining, please like and subscribe. It really helps get these videos out to people that, you know, need to see it. <laughs> if you're having any trouble with Unreal Engine, anything related to your game or shaders or any of my tutorials specifically, jump in our Discord. You can DM me personally and I will help you out with whatever is going wrong in your unreal life. If you especially enjoy what we do on this channel, don't be afraid to check out our Patreon. It's in the description. It really, really helps out with keeping these tutorials and videos just pumping out, just pump them out. So with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.